Today, we're bringing you a microphone that represents an advancement in microphone technology, the Townsend Labs L22 Sphere Microphone, a large dual capsule condenser microphone that has the ability to model other microphones. And how does it do this? Well, via a combination of hardware and electronic design coupled with software plug-in emulation. And these are no ordinary emulations either. Classic microphones such as the U87, the U67, the AKG C12, and even the Telefunken 251 are all emulated. But it doesn't stop there. It also has modern microphones such as the Sony C800 and the Sennheiser 416, plus many more. So even if you're a purist, I will say that this microphone out of the box sounds great on its own. Now, Townsend Labs is not the only company that offers mic modeling. In fact, Slate Digital has their VMS system, the ML1 and the ML2, which are large diaphragm and small diaphragm condenser microphones, respectively. However, what makes this microphone a little bit more interesting is that it has two capsules, and that means that you can record in stereo. While that may not be necessary for voiceover, it is a great bonus if you're a guitarist or any other sort of musician, because now you can record in stereo. The other benefit of having dual diaphragms is that if you are a guitarist, you can use this microphone and use a combination of microphone emulations. Say you want a U87 blended with an SM57. You can do that all with one take because you can model two mono mics with this at the exact same time. That is very cool. For voiceover talent, this microphone can also be an incredible value. It means you don't have to go out and buy different microphones for different applications of VO. For example, let's say you're doing some promo work and you may want to use a 416. Well, this microphone models it. Or perhaps you want to do an intimate read an hour later. You may want to use a U87 or a vintage ribbon mic. Well, this microphone also models many of those as well. So that is a great benefit. It's also a benefit for post houses as well because it means you can match the location mic on set even if you don't have it in your mic cabinet. Uh, now, we will admit that we would like to see some more location mics being matched, say like the Shep CMC 641 or the DPA 4017 or even the NTG3. Those would be great options, but we think those are going to be coming in the future. So we're just going to wait and see. Sounds great so far, right? Well, there's even more because the software also emulates the filter switches as well as the distinct polar patterns to the real microphone. Say, for example, you have a 414, which has a cardioid polar pattern, a figure of eight, as well as a hypercardioid polar pattern. You can model all that right in the software itself. But here's the really cool thing. Even if the real mic didn't have that polar pattern, you can still switch to it. Say, for example, a SM57, which is a cardioid only, you could set your software to be omni, or you could set it to be a hypercardioid or uh, perhaps a wide cardioid. It's all selectable right in the software itself, and that's all due in part to the dual diaphragms in this microphone. Having dual capsules also allows you to change your axis relative to the source of the microphone. Say, for example, your post house, if you have a microphone or a talent rather that uh, sends the lean off or get off mic, well, using that access dial, you can dial them back in. You can also use it for effect, too. Let's say you want the talent to actually sound as if they're walking away a little bit. Well, you can simply turn that access dial and get a little bit more room tone into your recording post-record, and that's the big thing to remember. All of this is done post-record. There's also a proximity dial, and that allows you to dial a little in a little bit more intimacy or perhaps dial out some intimacy. The other thing is that in combination with the access control can help you reduce plosives in a much more natural way. And that is a huge benefit for voiceover. Now, let's take a look at the mic itself. It's definitely on the heavier, weighty side. So you're going to want a mic stand that has a weighted base and even a counterweight on the back arm. Otherwise, you may find this on the floor uh, rather quickly. So we don't want you to lose any microphone, no matter the cost, and this microphone is no different. So if you note here, on the front, this is how you can tell the front of the microphone with the Townsend logo. You'll also see some silkscreened emblems as well, and those denote the directional placement of the microphone. So if you're recording in mono, say for voiceover, you're gonna wanna set this positioning to the circular omnidirectional polar pattern. However, if you're recording a stereo source, you just turn the microphone 90 degrees and you'll see that there are two omnidirectional polar patterns that sort of overlap, and that denotes stereo recording. On the back, you're gonna see that it has a 
10 decibel and 20 decibel pad switch. Now, you're not gonna need that for voiceover because if you're recording voiceover at 140 decibels, which is the dynamic range of this microphone, you're probably not gonna be doing it for very long. You will see a special switch here, and that is the calibration switch. Now, the Sphere requires that you record both capsules, even if recording a mono source. And because of this, Townsend recommends that you use a stepped gain preamp with matched gain or a digitally controlled matched gain preamp. And if you don't have that, however, that's where this calibration switch comes in. If you have a variable microphone preamp, you're going to require two. If you have two variable microphone preamps, you can use this in combination with the software to dial in the correct gain settings that match one another. And matching gain is important because you don't want to throw off the phase coherency and ruin the microphone's emulation. This is also very common among ambisonic microphones. Now, the technical specs can be found on Townsend Lab's website, but by and large, we find this to be a solid and well-built microphone that is quiet in its performance. Now, what's it cost? That's probably what you're asking. Well, $1,500 retail, and that includes the shock mount and a nice support case. That's an incredible value, especially when you consider that this microphone emulates all these great classic microphones that cost several of several thousands of dollars, even if you can find them. It emulates a Sony C800. That's a $10,000 mic in and of itself. So does this microphone have some caveats? Yes, absolutely. It's not fun to calibrate it if you don't have a matched gain preamp. It's not hard, it's just one more step. Is the software going to be supported? Well, only time will tell. If you're having to send voiceover files to a producer straight away, you're going to have to post-process those. And that's just going to take a little additional time. But overall, we find those to be small little inconveniences uh, for this microphone. So the big question is, how well does it sound? And how well does its emulations compare to their real-world counterparts? We think quite well, but you can decide for yourself, because in the next few weeks, we're going to be releasing some comparisons between the L22 and its real-world counterparts. We're talking a U87, a 416, even a 451. So this is a good time to remind you to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you're notified as to when those videos are ready. Meanwhile, let's take a listen now to some emulations that the L22 has to offer. At the North Loop VoiceOver Workshop, we're working hard to support your voiceover success by providing the resources, tools, and techniques that help you flourish along your journey. Like these comparisons between classic voiceover microphones and undiscovered hidden gems. Our VOScripts.com practice scripts that build technique and effective studio training with critical feedback from expert coaches. We will guide you every step of the way, including showcasing your talent with finely crafted demo reels. Start your career today with the North Loop VoiceOver Workshop and launch your future. At the North Loop VoiceOver Workshop, we're working hard to support your voiceover success by providing the resources, tools, and techniques that help you flourish along your journey. Like these comparisons between classic voiceover microphones and undiscovered hidden gems, our VOScripts.com practice scripts that build technique, and effective studio training with critical feedback from expert coaches. We will guide you every step of the way, including showcasing your talent with finely crafted demo reels. Start your career today with the North Loop VoiceOver Workshop and launch your future. We hope you've enjoyed this video. We certainly like bringing them to you. Now, this is a good time to remind you that if you're an amateur VO talent and you're looking for scripts to practice with or perhaps to create a demo with, you can find them right at voscripts.com, voscripts.com. It's super easy to remember, and you can go ahead and find some scripts right there. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a comment down below.